A section of this video is sponsored by Prosperous Universe. Hey, it's Alex again, and in my never-ending pursuit to avoid boredom, I play just about everything that comes out it feels like, so I've been accumulating my personal favorite hidden gem games throughout the year that I think many of you will enjoy. First, let's start this off with one of the better third-person combat games from the year, Ultra Age, which is on PlayStation, Switch, and out soonish on PC. Ultra Age is a straight-up room-to-room, area-to-area action game with little in between, but the battles are solid enough to make it all worthwhile, assuming you enjoy high-speed action combat. Although this is not a roguelite, it's a normal beginning-to-end adventure, it does interestingly integrate some elements from that genre. At certain sections of the game, the difficulty of some bosses will spike up pretty hardcore, but the game lets you explore a randomized dungeon from time to time, which allows you to farm resources for upgrades and find statistical improvements. There's also this kinda weird night and day manipulation thing that lets you acquire more items if you use up your time-changing charges. The second half of this game gets pretty tough, so you do need to build out a solid character or you might be struggling. If you have played either or both of the Nier games, this takes big inspiration from that series, making this a great fit for anyone wanting a third option after playing both of those, since Ultra Age shares a similar style of combat and general style. Next up is The Rift Breaker on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox, which is a surprisingly deep action strategy tower defense game. To put it bluntly, I suck at the normal RTS genre where you must be able to uber micro multiple units to really have any much fun. The Rift Breaker, though, controls like a straight up top down action RPG, putting you in direct control of just one beefy mech. You can gear out Ashley and her mech with all kinds of crazy gun combos using a really cool weapon modifier system, and throw on different upgrades you find out while exploring or by researching things in the huge tech trees. Add on top of that the core base building and tower defense aspects that are not cumbersome or archaic feeling, and you have yourself a near perfect melding of action, strategy, and the RPG genres, while leaving out the lesser elements that sometimes sag down each of those. You're never doing too much repetitive straight up combat, you're not getting too bogged down by constantly pooping out units, and you're not showered in tons of useless randomized gear. That's the Rift Breaker, check it out if you're in the mood for some good old base defending with a ton of depth. This next section is sponsored by Prosperous Universe, which is a free browser-based sci-fi MMO economy sim. In this, you create your own company, establish a planetary home base, and begin either focusing on getting masterful at your chosen profession, try to forge alliances with other players, operate a successful trading fleet, aim to financially rule overall by dominating the market, or really, whatever else you choose to do. Since Prosperous Universe functions on an entirely real-world player base economy and general ecosystem, you can pretty much tackle it any way you see fit. Now in case you're cautious of games with a free price tag, well, in the developer's very own words, realism will not be sacrificed to pay to win shenanigans. Good call. Prosperous Universe is still being heavily developed, being currently in early access, but anyone who can get on a modern internet browser can go play it all right now. I put a link down in the description if it looks like your kind of thing, and a big special thanks to Prosperous Universe for sponsoring today's video. Next is the turn-based RPG Fuga Melodies of Steel, which is on PC, Switch, PlayStation, and Xbox. Fuga seems like an innocent little cute game, but the tagline Melodies of Steel might just be the resonating shrieks of the fuzzy animal child you stuffed into your tank's cannon to use as ammunition. For real though, this game allows you to permanently sacrifice any of your party members to fire off the Soul Cannon, a weapon strong enough to obliterate any boss in one hit. Of course, that is obviously a very, very desperate measure, and most of you will like trying to keep your ragtag tank crew alive throughout this entire journey instead. That means you're gonna have to get pretty good at combat, which is the main thing you'll be doing as you slowly travel along various routes. Your tank has three main weapons you can use at a given time, but whatever party members you have commandeering them changes their properties and abilities you can cast. It's not too dissimilar to a traditional party-based combat system, just grafted onto a ridiculously sized tank instead. You must carefully balance health restoration, delaying enemy actions, whittling down armor gauges, and swapping teammates out to counter with the right weapon type. 
Outside of combat, there's also a big focus on increasing the affinity between party members and enhancing your tank which is somehow large enough to have a farm, a kitchen, a workshop, a dormitory, and a few other upgradable facilities. It all works together quite well, and if you're in the mood for a solid but slightly different style of turn-based RPG, I recommend Fuga Melodies of Steel. Last, I have the Metroidvania Souls-like Grime on PC. This is among one of the harder games on this list, and one that really requires regular use of well-timed parries. Grime found a really smart way of forcing you to learn new enemies' movesets, by rewarding you with statistical passive upgrades when you parry enough attacks from each type. You're not only training your brain to actually pay attention to the enemy types and attack patterns, but you're also earning one of the main character upgrades while doing so. That is one of the best synergies of gameplay mechanics, tutorials, and upgrade systems all in one. Also, the game had a big overhaul patch, which completely reworks the armor system and made the controls feel more precise. If you've played some of my other personal favorites like Hollow Knight and Salt and Sanctuary, you'll likely also enjoy dying your way through grime. And with all that, those were most all of my favorite hidden gem games from this year. But wait, I do have a few last minute honorable mentions. Also check out the action-adventure platformer, Blue Fire. The card RPG roguelite, Trials of Fire, which launched its full version this year. Another roguelite, the 2D retro-inspired and heavy gun synergy-focused, Critadel. And the single-player survival shooter, Chernobylite, which also landed its 1.0 full release. Now before I close this all out, I want to know what your favorite hidden gem games were, so hit me up in the comments and I might just play it if it looks cool. A big thanks for checking this out today, and a special thanks to Prosperous Universe for sponsoring today's video. As always, this has been Alex, and I'll see you in the next one.